Hi guys, welcome to Accessorize Your Life, where aging gracefully and accessorizing your life meet. I'm Julia. Today it is Thursday and it's time to do a get ready with me look from the items I pulled from Sunday Shop My Stash. And if you remember, I went for a thriller, filler, and spiller look in eyeshadows. Today, can you guess what it is? Mm-hmm. You have any idea? Hurry up, tell me down in the comments. Yeah, well, I had to create this look dealing with a whole bag of tricks for my tricky eyes because as we mature, our eyes change on us like so many things, girls. But anyhow, hooded eyes, fine lines, dry eyelids, oily eyelids, you name it. But we can wear these colors, girls. We can do what the younger girls are doing. It might not look as smooth and, you know, finesse as they do it, or finesse. I always get words mixed up. But anyway, we can do it. We can pull it off if we take our time and check out all, you know, just go through the geography of our eyes, check out the fine lines, where it's oily, where it's dry, where it's hooded, whatever, and compensate in those areas. So that's what I did today. And so I hope you stay tuned to see how I achieve this eye look using, I'm going to tell you, using my Thriller palette. Yeah. Thriller. 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 <laughs> Keep watching, and I'll see you in the comments. Bye-bye. Guys, I had fun this week with my palettes. I played around in Pat McGrath's Eye Ecstasy Subversive Palette and got these crazy looks that I'm showing you now. Forgive me for that, but I had to. And then I thought I would get my um, face roller out of the fridge because it's nice and cold and it will help depuff my hooded eyelids. And now I'm cleaning up my brows some. I'm going to go in with Kat Von D's Brow Struck in Walnut and Dark Brown. And here I'm using the e.l.f. Um, this is the eyebrow and eyelash primer. It actually sets them and um, I get it for a dollar to two dollars to three dollars depending on where I find it. But I go through a lot of this. It's one of my faves. And here is the e.l.f. Eye primer in a stick. I give it five stars because it's easy to spread. It's emollient, but does reduce the oil on my lids. So, you know, it's a it's a good product. And there I am taking it um, the other end of um, it and going on the. The line to line my uh, lower eyelids. It's a liner and a primer here. And here is Pat McGrath's um, concealer brush, but I'm using it to get my eyelids in check. And next is the Second Love Glitter Primer. I'm going to use it all over my eyelids because I think I need it with this shadow and you'll see me go back into it later. I like to pat it in. Oh, here is the star of the show. Here is the thriller. It is the beautiful, it's Pat McGrath eye ecstasy, ecstasy subversive eyeshadow palette there are five shadows there's shimmers there's satins they're buttery soft they're vibrant the color story is nice it is great for a thriller look the colors in that palette are and the one i'm using now is um what is that color it 
it's quite a pretty color. It's blue blood. Yeah, blue blood is what I'm taking in. It's really intense. Especially since I laid down all that primer. And by the way, the brush I think I'm using is a flat definer brush from Sonia G. Or is it? It may be the... Oh, you know what? No, it isn't. It's the soft shader from Sonia G. It's the one with the white um, bristles. I think it's squirrel here. So these are not... Uh, these are natural bris bristle brushes, actually. And I have to clean it up some. So I'm trying to go for a sharp edge. And then I want to work that color, that blue blood, out some. And the thing is, it's not a um, shimmer and it's not a matte. It's just right in between. It's that nice, nice satin. I forgot to moisturize my lips, so I'm going in there with a little lip moisturizer. That's the Dior. I think it's their backstage or something like that. Your Attic Lip Maximizer. All right, here's my next color, and this is Crimson Fire. It's also a, a satiny color, and I'm working that in. And now I think I have the Mini Booster. It's a crease brush from Sonia G. Like I said, they're all natural fibers. And the, the key to this is just blending, blending, blending. And another thing you'll see if you take a look and note of this for us ladies with hooded eyelids is those deeper colors are going right out there to, right, not right out there, but right in there to kind of deepen that area, recede that area so that it doesn't come forth too much. taking a little bit more of that crimson fire to define that area just to give it a little sharp edge if you will I'm trying to keep it sharp I'm trying to keep it clean and so I went in with this smaller brush and this one is the flat definer from um, Sonia G And again, you know, you just have to blend. It's all about the blending. Yeah, you have to check the cement symmetry as much as possible. And just keep blending. Here is where I go back in with the glitter because I just feel like it is necessary to keep these shades or shadows in place and to make them vibrant. I feel like I need a little more. My, maybe my eyelids just eat it up, who knows. And we're back in there and I'm taking gold standard. And if you happen to notice that blue on the upper left, that's I used that earlier in the week and you may have seen it in one of the earlier pictures. I love it. It's lapis luxury. But right here, going in with my fingers is gold standard. And it's showing up. Okay, here I am making sure I get that gold standard eyeshadow in at the right place. You don't want it all over your eyelid. I think when you have hooded eyes, you just don't need too much shimmer or anything that really stands out too much because you'll end up looking like a disco ball. 
but if you get it in the right place and you put some beautiful satins and mats around it I think you're good to go in my case I'm using satins and the satins you'll see are over most of my eyelid and just with the pop of gold standard so that they stand out and I had to uh, wet my brush a little I think just to make sure I got that gold standard in there but it's really important for us ladies to uh, just get to know our eyes really well and to look at the shadows we want to use and see what is best to use where. I don't feel like every eyeshadow in a palette can go anywhere on the eyes. I think you really have to work with it. I prefer mattes and satins on the outer area and those shimmers in the inner corner to the, I say midway into the lid. But, you know, you never know. Now, actually, this eye look that I'm getting or bringing to you today is from a model I saw on a palette that's coming into me. And I will go into that when it arrives. But I am trying to duplicate or slightly replicate this look that I saw. And um, it's coming out pretty well, but I'm making it fit me. I'm taking into account that I have the hooded eyes, the fine lines the oiliness and dryness in my eyelids. But so far, it's working out well. And I do wanna bring that look to you that I am duplicating today. I wanna to bring that original look to you when I do a look from that palette when it comes in. Okay, now here I am using the Pat McGrath Primer. It's a mild flowery scent and it's creamy in texture and it shears out. It doesn't leave any residue and it uh, dries down and it's lightweight. I find it's matte and it's not over drying. So I like it a lot. I think it's a good multi-seasonal one and so was that First Aid Beauty Primer. It's a good um, primer as well. It's mild, it's floral scent, it's lightweight, it's not a putty and it's sheared out. It left no residue. Those both could be used um, multi-seasonals, uh, but I'm not sure about summer. And you just saw me take in the Pat McGrath setting power, I, powder. I don't remember which one that is, but it's lightweight and it's good. It's a good all over for your concealer as well as your face prior to setting your foundation. And now I'm going into the Pat McGrath foundation. I have it in medium deep 27 and it's kind of a red and it's slightly runny, but it's highly pigmented. And girls, a little goes a long way. But in this um, instance, I seem to be putting on more than I expected. I, you know, I didn't think I'd need that much. But it smooths out my skin, and it's non-luminous. It's just a natural look, I think, and it wears well. And I like to get it in really well around my uh, mouth. And in that, those smile lines, those labial folds and everywhere. Uh, and then I like, you know, center it and then take it out because you just don't want too much. You don't want a cake face. You just want to look natural. And this foundation is good for that. It has grown on me. And here I am with her concealer and it's pretty thick. I have it in MD24. Use with caution. A small amount goes a long way. Uh, it covers well. But I have to say, find your correct shade. I think I could have gone a little lighter with this, um, but you get um, good coverage with it. It's not radiant, but I still think I see a little creasing through it. And you know what I do with that concealer? I help it to define my eyeshadow, to give me that snatched look on the sides. Yeah, that's what I use to help get that there. And I'm going back in with that powder. I feel I need it just to set everything. Mm -hmm. 
I do have her finishing powder, but I just didn't use it today. I used that, um, I think I used the setting powder for everything. And now we're into Kylie. Dear Kylie, this is the bronzing powder. I have it in Tawny Mammy. And I find that it's a little warm. It's like a red brown and a slightly soft to touch. And I find it shears out pretty well. I think it's okay. I have no problems with that. And I'm using it to contour. And then I decided to pick up my Prime Beauty bronzer in Bronzeville. Again, it's warm and it's in a red and it's uh, women of color friendly. And I find that if you um, go in light with it, you know, you get that kind of a warm, light, red brown color. But the more you build up on it, you know, you watch out because, like I said, it's pigmented and you can get a deep brown with that bronzer that I'm using as a concealer. And I, I'm using it to. Um, just emphasize there my nose, kind of contour all around my face. You know I'm big on that. And here we are with Pat McGrath's blush, latest of one of her latest. It's the Paradise Venus, and it's a warm terracotta. And guys, I went in heavy. It's a matte, so you're not getting any shimmer there, but it doesn't make you look doorknob dead. You know, you look okay. It's soft. It's a soft white wash of color if you go in light. And if you go in heavy like I did, you get a deep reddish color. But, you know, there's no going back when you go in heavy handed. So, it is what it is. I'm happy with it. Okay, her highlighting trio. You know, this this highlighting trio, it has, like I said, it's a trio, so it has three uh, glowing high beam colors for your uh, cheekbones. And I find that the shimmers in it are large. This is not your uh, glow from within kind of a highlighter, but you get an iridescent pink, you get a fine gold, and you get a bronze nectar. And I think I'm going between the iridescent pink and the fine gold for this get ready with me. I'm taking it all around, yeah, just to highlight my forehead a little bit above my eyes because I tend to be a little darker there. I think as we age, we get this dark band above our, our eyebrows, you know. I feel like I need to lighten that up. So I'm using the Max Fix Plus um, setting spray. And I've been liking it. And it's been a um, staple here on my um, vanity. I have it in Cherry Blossom. And here I am using my finger to go back in with the uh, eyeshadow because I think I lost some when I sprayed with the Max Fix Plus. I'm gonna touch that up. You don't go this far with it and then not see it. You wanna see it. You want that gold to pop. You want that crimson fire to be on fire and blue blood. I don't know where they got that name from, but I like it. Alrighty, so we're going in with something that I'm not good at. It is eyelining. <clears throat> so I am going to uh, use the Smashbox Arch Liner. I think that'll help get this liner on my eyes, you know, the best best way that I can. If, you know, because I'm not good at this at all. But I'm taking it from the tube and putting it on this little liner because it's arched and angled. 
and I think it'll give me a more defined look. So this is something you'll see me playing with a lot or playing around with a lot because it's hard for me. Um, but I wanted to emphasize that eye line. I wanted to just get away with using mascara and a nice line and not have to worry about falsies. So, you know, you gotta, you gotta become a master at something, you know, if you don't want to use, um, everything there is to use. So I'm rambling, but I feel like I have to get better at applying liner since I don't want to use falsies. So I'm making an effort. And I'm gonna have to go in and clean it up because it, like I said, is not easy for me. Now I'm going in with my Carmody um, eyeliner pencil to just kinda deepen it and go under the um, upper lash line because I find that also gives me some depth. And usually I don't take black on the lower line, but for some reason I thought I could do it today and get away with it. And here I'm cleaning it up. And now we're going in with Pat McGrath's Dark Star Mascara. It's thick, it's deep, it's black. It coats your lashes for those fat, thick, <laughs> relatively long lashes. But yeah, I like it. But I think mine, after this application, needs to be um, thrown out. I think it has served me well. Um, I haven't used it consistently, but I've gone in it from time to time. But it's really thick and it's really globby on the wand, so I think it's done. Uh, mascara shouldn't be kept and used or opened and used for no more than six months. And um, taking it in and out of the tube to uh, put it on is not a good idea because you're introducing a bacteria into your mascara. So uh, I've done that with this mascara, so um, I think it's ready to uh, go. And here I am doing the lower lash line. I'm going back into that palette and pulling out the colors I used earlier. And I think I'm just going to go in with Blue Blood and a little bit of the gold standard there. And I take that Blue Blood on the lower lash line, but I also carry it up to meet the eyeliner. And I'm happy with that. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this look. Now we're gonna do my lips. And for the liner, <clears throat> I'm using it with the NYX Matte Lip Liner in Prune. It feels very velvety and very soft. Guys, I wanna thank you for tuning in to Accessorize Your Life. And like I said earlier, if you're new here and you or you've just been watching my videos, I invite you to subscribe. Please, um, you know, check out my other videos and I'm working along, trying to get better at applying makeup. That's why I shot my stash, to use what I have, bring in some new, but learn how to do makeup better. Um, also, if you are a regular here, thank you for tuning in. I am using the P Pat McGrath uh, Wild Orchid Matte Lippy. It goes on like a liquid, it's non-drying, and uh, it's high color payoff. So I hope you like this look I've created and at the end you will see a couple of the looks that I got during this week using all of the palettes I pulled. Again, I pulled Pat McGrath and it was her, what was it, her Eye Ecstasy palette. And then I pulled Lorac and I used this out throughout the week. And actually it is the Unzip palette. And then I pulled, which was really fun, I pulled the um, hip, I think it's called hip dot, yes, hip dot Zion palette. So um, yeah, I had fun this week with my eyeshadow palettes. Again, thank you for joining me and I hope 
you will take time to subscribe to Accessorize Your Life. Bye-bye for now.